Hello, monsters are bound here, and welcome back to Total War. Hello, monsters are bound here, and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 2 Mortal Empires and Part 4 of my Kemler campaign. We're currently having a problem with cooties, as in we don't have enough. Vampire ones, that is, obviously. Uh, we're currently struggling with uh, untainted osmosis, which is being a problem with our public order. Public order is always a problem, and the vampire counts don't really have any public order buildings weirdly. Um, unlike the vampirates who have both corruption causing buildings plus buildings that reduce the effect of public order on corruption and also public order buildings. So the vampirates have got the whole shebang. The vampires on the other hand sort of struggle with this and I kind of wish they'd maybe given a new building which which did the same thing as removing the public order penalty um, thanks to, but I, I guess it's a weakness of the vampire counts, but also it's very difficult to spread that vampiric corruption a lot of the time. So you don't really have ways of combating it, um, especially early game. Late game, it's not too bad. Early game, particularly a struggle. Um, it's not generally too bad in Sylvania, where you obviously have um, local population increasing vampiric corruption. But for Kemla, what an absolute ball ache it is. Holy crap, especially because the Bretonians have quite early buildings that spread. Um, untainted in adjacent provinces. So basically you end up surrounded with provinces that reduce your vampiric corruption and you don't really have many ways of generating it anyway. So very much the issue I feel like in the early campaign. I mean Gisero here started off with about 70% vampiric corruption but it's just dropped like a stone. I mean it's slowly increasing now but only just. So done some rename. We've got Father Jack here. Father Jack's going to lead our second army. And then we've also got Krell 2, The Empire Strikes Back, because White Kings are basically Krell anyway. So then we can have Krell 3, Return of the Jedi, Krell 4, The New Batch, Krell 5, um, what's another, what's a Jaws one? Bigger Bites? Something? I'll, I'll have to look it up on Wikipedia. Anyway, so that's what we're doing. And Karak Ziflin, I, if I can get walls here then I could probably upgrade to the Barrow, but Karak Ziflin is so out of the way. I think what we need to do is we need to take out Bretonia, because Bretonia, particularly Caron over here, is going to be an issue for us. If we can take this out, then that's sort of secured our north-ish, because we've got Musalon to our west, who is kind of friendly to us, and um, I, I think maybe Scarsnake. Okay, well, how about... Yeah, okay, well, that's... Okay, so we've got, we've got you know, we're not at war with them. Um, can we get an aggression pack with you? Okay, good. Like that. What about you? Okay, good. So, hopefully, those beastmen will go and wail away on the Bretonians and weaken them for us. Um, they'll also spread chaos corruption, which is not necessarily a good thing, but I mean, at this point, I'll, I'll take anything over untainted, to be honest, so that's all good. Uh, okay, so we're just waiting on getting the tech, which is going to make our skeleton warriors and spearmen all free, hopefully. And do you need fresh troops? Yes, I sort of do. But uh, Agent 47, 46, sorry, no is going to come over here. If he, if he continues to do well, we might upgrade him to 47, maybe even 48. But at the moment, he's 46 because he's a screw-up. And Heinrich is going to come over to Blackstone Post. You and in fact, what I might do here is get another corpse cart. I might get one of them. I think what I want Father Jack's army to be is just pure skeletons, but I'm going to trade over some skeletons to him and maybe get another corpse cart, another Black Knight here, so I'm going to swap them over. Uh, the reason being, the corpse carts are quite slow. They're only 23 speed, the same speed as the Zombles. So if Father Jack is reinforcing us, then those corpse carts will take for fucking ever to reach us. So, we want the corpse carts to be in Kemler's army, where they will be on the front line immediately there to buff off our skeletons, and then our reinforcements can arrive and reinforce our line. Okay, so let's end the turn. It could be... I mean, maybe we want to start by taking Marineburg. The only problem is then that would potentially put us at odds with the Empire. Oh, apparently the Crooked Moon Mutinous Gits and the Crooked Moon have made peace, which is... I mean, it's nice when, when two different peoples 
can can make peace, but I don't think that should actually be possible. Okay, lots of wars being declared. Bordelow and the Beast Men, that's nice. Because they should smash their way from the south to the north. Doing some damage as they go. And hopefully, distracting the Bretonians. Ah, there we go. The Ripper Horn Tribe and Power of Honor at war. Excellent. Okay. I don't think there's any point rushing over just yet. We will wait until that corpse cart is recruited and then go and grab it. We're three turns away from that. That's all fine. Um, how many turns of research do we have? Uh, research. Is that dropped already? Oh shit. Um, okay, let's head over here. It does say that Garrison is suffering attrition, but I don't understand why. I don't think they are. We have met before. Cannot be sustained. Are they losing money? I mean, this could be the perfect time to strike. Okay, um, let's get Balefire there. We'll also upgrade this and Gisero. You dare. Why are they taking attrition? I mean, it's good. It's very good. How much attrition are they taking? Devotee of the lady. It's not a huge amount. But... But... If they keep suffering attrition, that's only going to... We, we could we could rush in, grab Marineberg, and then grab Grung Zint at the same time. Castle Artois is probably going to be fine. In fact, what we could use is Father Jack, maybe, to just summon a bunch of skeletons and then just prop up public order. That could be an option. Oh, they've stopped suffering attrition. They've managed to manage to sort it out. Still, I don't know how many turns they were suffering attrition from, but it's going to take them a well. They might heal up almost immediately, to be honest. Still, if we can grab Marineberg, Marineberg Marineberg's defenses aren't aren't very good, but they does have the Marineberg docks. Which would give us a lot of money. Okay, Heinrich Kemmler is strict. That's good. And we don't really have any money. So. Let's... Okay, Father Jack, you're going to come over here. You're going to give us that. We're going to take one of them and give you that. You dare. And then you're going to come back. Camera's going to stay there for the moment. And we don't really have the money to do anything. We need just a little bit more cash. Got a 5% chance to kill yourself. So don't, basically. Uh, we've got lots of building going on there. I think grabbing Marineberg. Luon's right there. And he's only got some knights. You honor me. Okay, what we're going to do Ready. is... Oh, shit, you've got an army there. Of the realm. Not a big one, though. Very tempting. You don't take attrition damage anywhere, do you? Um, if we go, like, there... Okay, that's a slight problem. How many more turns? Two more turns. How many turns until you, re you rebel? Four turns. Okay, that's doable. And 17 turns. Okay. This is all very knife-edge stuff. This all could go horribly wrong, but I think we can hit Marineberg. If we can hit Marineberg, 
Then we can hit Grungzint, kill Luon, and then that leaves Bretonia itself very open to invasion. The only problem is that Marineburg is then probably going to rebel. But we will have a lot more money if we take Marineburg. So I think I think that's my strat. I think we just kick the door in and kill everyone inside. No finesse. Okay, Moose wants to kill. Oh, hello, Moose. On what are you up to? You're doing some stuff over there. I mean, at least you're keeping them busy. You might end up getting killed, but that means my, we might end up being able to confederate with you. So swings and roundabouts. Okay, the Ripperhorn tribe is dead. That's unfortunate. Got a bale fire. Brazier, Brazier, there. You, dare. you go there. I need more minions. And we're going to declare war. Now they die. Okay, it doesn't like our chances, but I disagree. I think our chances are pretty good. Let's get a battering ram so we can smash down. I forgot we, we don't have any monsters, so we can't technically smash down the gate, despite the fact that we obviously bloody well can. Can we still tech? Failure. Agent 46, you're rubbish. Bloody rubbish. We can't recruit any of those, but next turn we will have free Skellington, so we should see our upkeep shoot up, and although Luon could potentially come to try and ruin our day... I reckon that even if he... Oh, imagine he's got a lot of fucking knights. No. I think we'll be alright. I think we'll be alright. Probably. Fingers crossed? Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. But we've got 159 upkeep at the... Uh, 159 income at the moment. So let's see what kind of income we will have when all our skeletons are free skeletons. I think it's going to be significantly better. You know what, I'd actually quite like it if Luan decided to attack. Yeah, you're going to come march down. Wow, you can march a fucking mile! Holy tits! How far can you fucking march? Oh, you've got a lot of knights. If we can win this battle, that would be really good. They do have a lot of heroes, though. Does Luon have magical... Who ha Does anyone have magical attacks? You are a spellcaster. You've got Flock of Doom. That's not good. That will do a lot of damage to our ethereal units. Um... Okay, I, th I think we'll be all right. I think. Maybe? Fingers crossed. While I find corner camping distasteful, I'm not too proud to use it when required. And this it's definitely required because if I set up in the middle of the battlefield, I would have the shit flanked out of me. There would be Bretonian knights bloody everywhere and there'd be nothing I could do about it. So, of course, we're corner camping over there. There we go. So we've got a nice line of Skellington spearmen. Then our line of Skellington warriors behind it as a reinforcement. And then we've got the Black Knights and finally the Hex Wraiths and Khan Wraiths back there got the corpse carts uh, either side just to buff us up so as you can see the skeleton uh, spearman over here they've got 43 melee defense which is actually quite respectable meanwhile the dire wolves are actually just well a bit sacrificial basically i don't want these archers to get shots in before we're in combat because my front line taking damage would be not good so we're using the dire wolves to be a little bit sneaky and flank around behind there they go. And uh, yeah, they're not going to survive this battle. In fact, I'm fairly sure of it. In fact, I'm positive. So they're going to come round and basically harass the archers. Try and draw their attention. Try and get them to hang back. They do have a lot of heroes here. 
They've got a prophetess, they've got a lord, they've got a paladin, and of course, Luan, Leon Kerr himself. Which is not great. Okay, here come the diables. So basically, we just, they're not probably going to kill many archers, but they're just going to draw their attention, force them to have to move around rather than fire, that kind of good stuff. Well, I hope they put people living in that caravan because you literally just trampled it. Trampled it to pieces. That. God, and they call me evil. Okay, as die walls coming in, they're harassing. There we go, just dodging around, just trying to pull these, these peasants back. Of course, they've got defences there. They've got some uh, knights errant holding them back. And of course, we're going to get shot up, but that's fine. As long as they're shooting at the die walls, they're not advancing. And that means the knights are then moving into position. This isn't about killing enemy units, it's about controlling the enemy army. Although we are actually then going to suicide charge them into some archers, just for shits and giggles. Taking a lot of the fire, but they're going to get through. Yeah, they're going to get through, no problem. Okay, meanwhile, got some charges going on as Mounted Yeoman advance. Mounted Yeoman, of course. Uh, are they shot cav? They're just cav. They're not very good, but they're going to charge directly into our spearmen, who are, of course, charge defense against large. Which means that when they're braced, they negate the enemy charge bonus. So as you can see, the Skellington's taking a little bit of damage there, but the Mounted Yeomen are actually coming off far worse against our Skellingtons. Not very well. So, so far so good. We are winning that first engagement. In comes a Paladin though, and then here comes some Knight Errants who aren't so much charging as just sort of sauntering. That is so French, isn't it? So very French. As Heinrich, Heinrich's running hither and dither trying to beef up our defences where we can. Krell has been spawned to try and deal with this enemy paladin and there's Krell too as well. But Luon's come in to to trash the party. What a dick. So we're going to deal with that paladin and Luon at the same time. In fact if we can kill Luon then all the better because that should then cause a morale shock to the enemy army. It, the so Knights Errant charged our spearmen and we took some damage. But the Knights Errant actually took some damage themselves. And we can heal. Some Knights trying to break through there, but they still run into more Skellington Warriors. Krell and Krell 2 continuing to fight the Paladin Lord. In fact, the Paladin Shilfoy Worm Killer there. He's, he's an expert at killing worms, but not at killing white kings. And so he's running away. Off he goes. Not very paladin anymore, are you? And so now it's Luon's turn. Come on, Krell. Get in there. Get in there. Chop his face off. And Krell too. Both of you. Okay, Luon's taking some damage there. That's excellent. Even Kemler's getting stuck in now. He just, kicked a, he just literally just kicked a whole bunch of people off their horses. I mean, for an old guy, he's quite spry, isn't he? Look at him go. Boff. Nice job, Kemler. That's the kind of stuff we need. Meanwhile, the enemy right flank has retreated, and we can now push our Skellingtons to create a little corridor for our Black Knights to sort of meander through. And that's going to give them access into the battlefield at large. However, the Bretonians do have a shit ton of knights running around, and that is actually not going to be a good idea. So we go, we can see our black knights moving around, trying to get outside. But unfortunately, they're just it's it's a bad it's a bad decision because they're not going to get the work done that they need to do. Unsupported, out behind the enemy lines, they've just got so many of these knights errant just cycle charging in and out that uh, they're just going to get caught and wiped out. So we get a little charge off there, but see, we quickly get surrounded by Bretonian knights. Not ideal. 
Bad decision there. See, we're getting surrounded. Not very, very good. Bad, in fact. Where is... Where's Krell? There's Krell and Krell too. They are still fighting Luon, chasing him all over the battlefield, taking chunks out of him. Come on. Come on, hit him. Come on, stop. Come on, we got this. We got this. Come on, Krell. Nice. Took a good chunk of health off. Let's keep that up. So, Luon is now running away. The... Bretonian left flank is shattered. As is their centre, we've got a big hole in their line now. As you can see, Luan's continue to try and run away. We have got yet more uh, skeletons being spawned just beyond here. We've got more hex rays. The hex rays have come in and charged. That's good. Luan seems to be getting away on only 425 health. No, he's coming back. He can't, he's just cycle charging Krell. Oh! Krell takes a nasty punch to the face there. You're okay, buddy. So pick yourself up. You're fine. Come on, get back in there. That's it. Show him what for. Against two... Oh, he's got 58 health left. He's going to try and get away. The Hex Race have spotted him. Locked him down. And Krell 2 gets the killing blow there. And with Luon Leonker dead, the Bretonian peasantry decide that actually it might not be a good battle to be in and they start running away off they go we get a nasty a little flock of doom cast on the hex race there but it's only a, uh, it's not an overcast it's just a normal cast so it doesn't actually do too much damage thank goodness because the hex race have already taken a lot of damage and uh, been healed up but they've been doing fantastic work and now they can do the best work of all which is killing bretonian peasants so we're going to cut them down as quickly as possible because at the moment i think they're just are they terrified now they're just routing but they might well come back to the fight but we've still got a lot of Bretonian knights. In comes some knights errant in a nasty charge. Our skeletons are not ready for that. Skeletons going everywhere. But then a counter charge from the black knights is going to lock them in place. And then the Khan raids are going to come in as well. And they're going to get overwhelmed. Off they go. Even the corpse cart getting stuck in. I mean, it's not doing any damage, but it just wants to be part of the action. And those last few Bretonian knights now running. Army losses taking effect. And the entire Bretonian army is now routing. But we are going to see if we can chase down some more just because, you know what, I don't really fancy fighting another army after this one. Well, despite it being a Pyrrhic victory, I mean, we still won. That's the main thing. Uh, how much of the garrison? The garrison is mostly defeated. Okay, so let's take the replenishment, because we're not going to you know, need it. Heinrich Kemmler is the King Slayer, which means he gets uh, charge bonus plus 10%. Not entirely sure how much he's going to use that, but recruitment costs minus 20% for cavalry units, which is. It's alright, I guess. And. We've got a bloody blood kiss, haven't we? Yeah. So. Who are we going to use that on then? And Krell 2, the Empire Strikes Back, has uh, got another rank. So that's nice. Okay, and we have Defi ah, Defiler of the Ancient Barrows, guided by Arkans, Tex, and Necromancer, enters the barrows he plunders, invoking ancient curses as he goes. That looks a bit healthier, doesn't it? There we go. Okay. Obliterate. Um, so, let's just fill up our army. Destroy them. I think we can probably auto-resolve that. Just quick save it. Yeah, I'll take that. And we're going to occupy Marineburg. And uh, we've got the Helm of Discord, which is actually very nice. And we should have, yes, Marineburg Dock Income 500. And the next one is 1,000. And then finally 2,000. So basically it doubles each time you upgrade it. So really nice to have that. Public order is going to be a little bit of a problem, though, because obviously... Um, there's no vampiric corruption here, apart from what we've literally just brought into the province, which is 
one, apparently. So that's fun. Right, uh, I would like more Winds of Magic. I don't think we need that just yet. I don't know if that's going to be that useful right away. Perpetual generation might be quite nice. Corral did do good work. I don't really see like <laughs> I, I think there's things we need first. I think there's things I'm, I'm I think the Curse of Undeath, it's not going to heal up. I don't think it heals up a lot, though. But I would like to get uh, Wind of Death. I think getting Wind of Death is going to be very useful. So let's get Van Hal's Dance Macabre. Because that means we can overcast it and it has an added area of effect, which is very good. And uh, then we need two more skill points here. I might put one in. I might put one in Curse of Undeath. Maybe one in. I'm not. Gaze of Nagash, very situational. Not sure it's worth the Winds of Magic, to be honest. 16 Winds of Magic is a lot. And to be honest, I it, it doesn't really seem to do an awful lot of damage. I think I'd prefer to concentrate on, on something else. And Krell 2 is going to have... Oh, I'm tempted to give him a Skirtle Steed, actually. Problem is, that does make him very vulnerable to, to, to anti-large units, so... I'm sort of tempted to leave him off it. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll grab it, because that would have helped him chase after Luon. Not that we had too much trouble there, but it would be nice. And we can grab Grung Zint as well, although Marineberg is probably going to rebel. And so is Gissero. Fabulous. Okay, let's grab some of you. Uh, what can we get here? Anything? Hunting grounds? Oh, what we can do actually now is because we have a port, we still can't trade. We still can't trade, no, because obviously we still have this little road that comes into this place. So we need to. I need to capture Castle Bastone. I'll have you speak now. Praise your gods. I like what you say. A defensive alliance. Okay. Fine. I'll go with that. Ready. I'll go with that. Um, I don't really want the Zombles. We don't have any recruitment here, though, which is bad. Marineberg's going to bring us a lot of money, but it's also going to be a massive pain in the ass. Okay. Okay. So we got we got tech. Um, upkeep reduction for Black Knights would be quite nice at this point in time, but I think I mean, weapon strength, uh, vigor loss reduction would be quite nice as well. I don't know about the upkeep. I, do, I don't tend to use Zombles very much. They're not that useful. Um, Get unnatural strength. There's no way a man without a mind should be able to wield a weapon effectively, but he can with supernatural help. Weapon strength plus 10% for Skellington Warriors and Skellington Spearmen, considering they make up most of our army at this point. That would be quite yeah. useful. Okay, we're going to have a rebellion. So, could we... Shuffle this way. Let's get Father Everything Jack over here. Please. Hopefully we can recruit someone. Just raise them up. Anything, please. I'm tempted to actually get this. But to be honest, I don't think the extra uncut is going to be massively helpful. What I really need at this point is just more raised dead pools. To be honest, what I'm annoyed by is like we had a big battle here and there was no corpse pile. There's no corpse pile here either. Nothing. 
What a sausage. Absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Now we could spend the, the bloodline point, but I think I'm going to save off until I see what people say on episodes one comments. Let's see, see what they say. And I'll spend it in the next episode once I've had a chance to read through those. Because this is going to be the last episode I'm going to be recording today. So that should then give me time in the next episode to sort of you know, do, do what you guys think, really. Or ignore you and do what I think. Now what's nice is we can grab Grung Zint here. Hopefully, anyway. Okay. Um, a cloaked stranger from the mist-shrouded lands of Albion approaches the request. He has a sinister aspect but assures you that his intentions are good. Yeah, no, it sounds it. So, grants his request. Uh, the promise of riches and powers are beguiling with a cost so little. Um, so that will give us chaos corruption. I mean, to be honest, it's not really going to affect us all that much for three turns, I don't think. Mind you, refusing the creature and giving more vampiric corruption would actually be quite... Uh, let's send this emissary on his way. There is nothing in Albion for us. Let's, uh, let's let some other fool pay for this creature's shadow war. Yeah, piss off. Okay, what we got? Bunch of, of you don't have any more people. Um, can we take you? Bring me zombie fodder. Hooray! That's it. Bugger off. Don't come Follow back. Me. Soon Do we chase up after you? you? I mean, Father Jack yeah. is almost dead, so we might um, just not do that right. Uh, let's get Lord of the Scourge to start. Well, no. Invocation of the Heck, I think. Necropolis Let's pop back there. You, me. you took a beating. Mm. We're going to grab Grung Zintz. Really? Okay, we're in circle. Turn them to death. Let's grab some more Skellingtons. It is. Oh, I don't think that's going to be... Save it just to be on the safe side, but I don't think that's... That should not be that difficult. Oh, that's fine. Kill them, I'm fine with that. We've got a Mortal Informer. We've got the Koning, Koning, Koningstein Stalkers. Chilfoy Wormkiller is dead, so is that guy. We've got a Luckstone. We've got a Restless Spirit. That's all good stuff. Okay. Okay, we've got Grungzint under control. We can knock down that. We could upgrade that, but I'm not going to. I'm going to hold off until we can upgrade to the Shady Township, which we should be able to do next turn, assuming I don't build anything. In the meantime, I'm going to build a Balefire Brazier here, I think. Gisero? Yeah. We need to start spreading this Vampiric Corruption. It is going to be so important. Just to try and maintain this province. I am a lord of Britonia. Never. And to be honest, we need some recruitment buildings. Recruitment buildings would be really nice right about now. Um, Heinrich, we're going to give you the Curse of Undeath. And then I might fill out... I mean, that just reduces the cooldown. And increases the number of uses. Which, to be honest, I'm not... I mean, we've we got like nine uses of Raised Dead. It only costs two... Winds of Magic as well, which is barely anything. So, it's nice to have, but I don't think vitally important. I, I would like Van Hal's Dance Macabre, just because I, I like that spell. It's a good spell to use when you have the Winds of Magic. And then we can get Evasion and then Wind of Death, which of course is an absolutely devastating spell when used in the right place. That can, that can just wipe out an enemy army. So I think that's what we're going to do. I quite like that. Uh, Krell 2... Could give you more... I mean, you've got... Let's give you Deadly Blade, I think. I think more weapon attack is good. I'm also going to give you the physical resistance, because that's going to be quite good as well. 
Do we have anything else? I mean, I could give you treasure. I don't really see the point, but we'll do that anyway. May as well. Do we have any more? No, we just got some zombies. Okay. Okay. Oh, what we can do is get the... Koning... They, they're free. They're free as well. You get free Koningstein stalkers. Poison attacks. That's quite nice, actually. Bats and wolves. Let's hope you replenish quickly, just in case... Mathis de Sassion comes back. Who shall we destroy? Well... That's the question, isn't it, Agent 46? Let's go with Specialist for you. Are you still buffing up our research? No, you're not. Raise it to the ground. Nice work. Okay, I think I think you've done enough that we're now going to rename you Agent 47 again. Uh, maybe even Agent 48, depending on how well that goes. Uh, we do actually have this entire province under our control, which means we can get growth, get the Foster Terror, not quite sure how that affects growth at all, but apparently that does. It also gives us vampiric corruption, which is hopefully going to help us out a little bit. Still dropping. Um, lack of corruption is still kicking our ass. That's fine. Greenberg will probably rebel. Public order here is okay for the moment, just because everyone who is upset is actually leaving for the rebellion, which is nice. And we do have the three, uh, the blood smooches. So we could, I mean, here are, op here are options. The Lemian Gifts would give upkeep minus 50% for heroes. Not hugely effective right off the bat. Uh, the Von Karsteins would give casualty replenishment rate and give us access to Sylvanian Crossbowmen, which I think, I feel like would be quite strong. Uh, the Blood Knights would give weapon strength plus 10% for cavalry units, all armies. Quite useful. The Neck Crash would give research rate plus 25%, which would be pretty, pretty good. And then the Strigoi give Ambush success chance plus 20%. So, lots of options. I, I feel like the Von Karstings are quite strong straight off the bat. Darkness comes. I'll have you speak now. Can I your gods have military access? It's not really insolence, is it? What I want is to join a confederation. That's what I want. Um, but I think that's fine. We just need to really start getting our infrastructure up. Um, now that we've got Marineburg, we've got a lot of cash, which is really nice. But Marineburg is going to take a while to build up. And in the meantime, it's it's fairly undefended. So we're going to have to be quite careful about what we do with Marineburg. Because, so the public order, we're losing 15 a turn just from the lack of corruption. Because there is no corruption here, basically. Which isn't great. And to be honest, all of our provinces, uh, yeah, I, th I feel like vampiric corruption is going to be the main issue. We're, we're, we're starting to get better at the Forest of Arden, and the Northern Grey Mountains should now sort of imp well, it stopped getting worse, let's put it that way, but the osmosis is still kicking our ass. I might just go and burn Montfort to the ground just to stop the, corru the, uh, the untainted corruption. I bet they've got one here as well. Yep, Grail Shrine. There we go. That's a pr okay. So basically, we we need to we need to stop the Bretonians building Grail Shrines because it's just a pain in the ass. We need to put a stop to that, and that needs to happen now. Or rather, it's going to happen next episode because we've run out of time. This episode, unfortunately, next time we'll be spending our blood smooches on whatever you guys feel like, or alternatively, on the neck crutch, which is what I want. Uh, but we'll have to see what happens next time. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.